The following program has been sponsored by generous friends and partners of Fred Jordan Missions. Sometimes it takes history a long time to reveal where you get your strength. FJM TV. I am Gina Thompson here with Joe Jordan and Pastor Chris, Hi, Gina. which is a humble title because I know you have your doctorate. So we're very happy that you're here so today. Glad to be here. And uh, we're going to be talking about faith today, how we can be so grounded in our faith that no matter what life throws at us, we can stand strong and secure in Jesus. And so we want you to hang here with us. But first of all, you guys go way back. Absolutely. Yeah. We do. You so. Pastor Chris and I have been friends for years and our kids played football together uh, at DCA. They um, played a lot of sports actually, all the sports I think, because both of our, our families are very sports minded. Um, then they went to the same university and um, just been a great friend, confidant in ministry, partner in ministry. We've done outreaches together. We've shared Jesus and demonstrated Jesus to this Coachella Valley and beyond, and uh, you know, just a privilege to, to call you my friend. Well, well Joe, I, I'm honored to be here. I don't know if you remember, but if it wasn't for you, Jordan Outreach Ministries, uh, you were in the beginning of our church plant back in 2004, launching us, just yeah. being an encourager. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I just I, I just feel like J Jordan Outreach Ministry, not only for my church, but every church in this valley is better because of our relationship with you. So thank you for your ministry. Absolutely, I mean, when I heard you were gonna launch church, I was like, yeah, go for it, let's do it. And uh, we prayed for you ever since. And, and, uh, and I know you have a new facility. I've been out yes. there and uh, on a side note, I yeah. got to be a part of negotiating on a John Deere tractor <laughs> oh boy, uh, to help you guys get it and get <laughs> a better we deal. Moved a lot of yeah, that so, tractor. Yeah. Thank you. That's awesome. So we've done great. some great things together. But one thing that's been, I think, the best is serving Jesus together and just being able to spread his love and, and, and his peace and you know, the only way I think I've been able to do it and you've been able to do it and any of us is, is just remembering that somehow faith isn't just when the mountaintop experience are at the height and we're like, yeah, we're on top of the world. But it's when we're in those deep valleys too that you just need to hold on to your faith in Jesus. And that's what we're talking about today, Pastor, is faith 24 seven and why it's so important. And just in a you know, in a few words, why is it so important to have faith 24 seven? Not that we always get it perfect, not that we're always happy or joyful because you know, life's hard sometimes, but why is it so important to keep our faith even in those trials and storms and tribulations in that time of discouragement? Why is it important to have faith 24 seven? Uh, that's such a great question, especially in the difficult times, isn't it? Uh, it, uh, it in, in the good times, uh, it's easy to go on uh, on cruise control, yeah. but there's something that happens, something that goes to the DNA of what it means to be a believer in Christ that happens when we go through difficulties and tribulations. Mm -hmm. I was, uh, my, my devotion today was John chapter nine, the, uh, when Jesus heals the blind man. And if you remember there, the question that the disciples asked Jesus, they said, was it his parents or his own sin that caused him? And Jesus says, neither. He is blinded so that he can give me, so, I can, so he can give glory to God. Right. And there's something that, is, that happens when we go through the, the disease, the difficulties of life, 
that sparks faith in us at a deeper level. Sometimes we don't even know why it's happening, but, but going through it helps us to discover it. Yeah. And in that story, uh, in, in, as, as the blind man uh, gives his testimony, he says, I was blind, but now I see. And Jesus says it's yeah. through the resurrection, it's through the death in our lives that resurrection happens. Yeah. There's something that comes alive yeah. when we get to the other side of of persecution, of difficulties mm -hmm. in, in our life. And I, I just think that the other side of it is it's unthinkable not to have faith. Where would you go mm -hmm. if you didn't have Jesus to lean on when you're going through those difficult times? And we see it all the time. You see it in your church. You see it everywhere you go. We see it on Skid Row. All of those who walk around with no faith, no one to trust in, and they're just walking around in this gloom and just scared, there's fear, anxiety, worry, then there's depression, discouragement, and then there's alcohol right, and drugs. Right, where the enemy wants everything. them to be. Yeah, and yeah. they just get sucked in. Well, and then there's another thought, you know, you're at the highs, you know, you have all the faith in the world, then you hit the lows, and the Lord brings us through a journey, and we're learning something through it. But I think one of the scary places you could be, like you were mentioning Skid Row, it's almost like in the middle. Mm -hmm. Like we can be cruising along with the Lord, you know, everything has been good, and we've come through that valley, and then we can get into a cruising place where it's like everything's good, but then that can be a scary place yes. also because we get a little complacent, yeah. you know, and our faith is just there, but it's not really like challenged anymore. So I think that's super important too about just daily digging into the word, having that word so um, within us. So, you know, when that challenge does come and, you know, we're, we're ready. And it's so key to be prayed up and to be in yeah. God's word, you know, not as a religious practice, but just to stay connected and intimate with Jesus. And you know, the bottom line for me, I look at Paul's life and to know him, to love him, to be more like him. That's what Paul and his desire was. And it was to know, be more like, and, and, and just be more connected with Jesus. Make me more like Jesus, God. That's my prayer every day. And you know, it, we're never gonna be Jesus and I'm fine with that. Our, our Jesus is perfect, but we definitely need to keep faith 24 seven and ask God to help us become more like Jesus so that we can battle through those storms and do it. Like you said, we're gonna go through hard times and sickness and everything else, but all things do work together for good to those who trust the Lord. I love that you bring up just the connection it brings us with Jesus because at the heart of faith, Jesus knows exactly what we've been through because he's been through there. Mm -hmm. uh, he, he lived this life in, uh, in his ministry. The people that he came to love for were the ones that beat him, spit on him. Uh, he, he was persecuted in this life. And he knows exactly what we're going through because he went through it himself. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. so key. Yeah, I love the scripture that says, peace I give you, peace I yes. leave for you. I yeah. mean, why would he say that. I mean, you know, like because he knows that he can even give it to us and sometimes we reject it and he leaves it there. You know, will we pick it up? Because it's really just our choice. It's a gift that he gives us. And why is it sometimes that we just almost reject it? You, you know, I, I think of the, the, uh, the disciples who went to Jesus and said, Jesus, help us to pray like you pray. And, and Jesus says, uh, pray with these words. He says, our father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. That, that the, the desire is, is that one day earth and heaven will come together in the resurrection. And that at that point, you know, the, what is, what is going to happen is what is in heaven will become what is in my life, what, is, what I live every single day here on earth. And so that idea of faith is, is there's a lot of hope because what's not here yet is coming. There will be a day when Jesus comes and yeah. we'll make what is wrong right. We'll take away the dis disease and sickness. Mm -hmm. um, I think that's the, the anchor of hope that, uh, that the Hebrew uh, scriptures talk about. Yeah, it's so key. And you know, I say it all the time. We serve hope through Fred Jordan Missions mm -hmm. and through this ministry. And that's for you too, our viewer, hope. We want you to have hope. And here's the hope, Jesus. Mm -hmm. He is the hope of the world. And that's what's so exciting to be able to serve a God who loves us so much and created us. He knew we would be knuckleheads, as I say. He knew we would blow it. He knew we'd miss the mark and he still sent Jesus. And he still had that plan to save us and deliver us. And um, 
the hope that we have in Jesus can sustain us through it all. But we have to keep our eyes, our trust, and our faith in Jesus. That's so good. And we're going to be right back talking about how to have stronger faith. Today, as we look all around, no matter where we are in life, more than ever, we see needs, great needs, hopeless, hurting, desperate people. And what we would typically see on the streets of Skid Row, we are now seeing in every city, every community, and in every neighborhood. Hunger is no respecter of persons. Willie Jordan says, hunger never takes a day off. For those of you during this unprecedented time of history who are doing good, then we ask that you would generously give to those who are not as fortunate. So many from all walks of life are hurting. Will you extend a hand of mercy to help them in their greatest time of need? Your most generous gift is needed. Go online to give fjm.org. Whatever the amount, great or small, your donation is greatly appreciated. conversation by connecting with us on social media. We are on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and more. Visit us at social.fjm.org. Well, welcome back. And we are talking about faith 24-7, how to have strong faith in good times and in bad times. And even in like the you know, times where we're just kind of cruising along. It's so important at all stages of life to have that faith. But what are some of the first steps we need to do to really be strong in our faith? Well, you know, it comes to the, the first step of coming to Jesus. You get to that point uh, where you hit the wall and you're tired of doing it the same way you've always doing it. There's got to be something better mm -hmm. in this life. Yeah. And it's at that difficult time in life, actually, where you hit the bottom, where something happens, something triggers faith, where you, you no longer are self-centered, but you said, God, help me to turn in this crisis of, of, of belief, help me to turn from what I was doing to what you want me to do and find purpose and meaning in life. And, and I think it has to. Uh, you have to get to that point of crisis of belief to, for your faith to be triggered on. You know, Joe, you were talking about my kids. Can I give a testimony? Absolutely. Is that okay? Um, I have four kids. Uh, our kids awesome grew up kids. together. Um, when, my, when my middle son uh, graduated from high school from the Christian school where, they, where our kids went to school together, he said, Dad, you made me go to church. You made me go to youth group and Bible study. You made me go to a Christian school. He says, I'm going to college now. And now I'm going to do it. I'm going to make my own decisions. Mm -hmm. Have you been yeah, there as a parent, where, where they 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 want to they want to sure. kind of spread branch out wings. and spread yeah. their wings? And and I said to my son, ironically, he was going to a Christian university, but ironically, uh, so I said, you know, we're we're sending you to college, but you're not going alone. Uh, we're going to go with you step by step, and and we journeyed with him. He made some bad decisions. In fact, he got kicked out of university. He had to reapply mm -hmm. and come back to it. Uh, but in that low point where he was uh, deciding what he wanted to do with his life, whether to continue at the university or not, um, that's where he came to faith. Mm. Well, and I'll say it this way, I think Jesus found him in the, the pits of despair and brought mm. him back to yeah. faith, right? Yeah. The Holy Spirit yeah. drawing him to himself. Mm. And, and if it weren't for that point where he branched out and hit the bottom himself, I'm not sure if he would have that, that deep grounded faith yeah. that he has today. Um, and as a parent, I wish he'd believe me. I wish he knew that there was a better way, but <laughs> for some reason, sometimes our kids just have to go down that road and discover it themselves. That's yeah. right. Well, That's right. I, was a, I was a PK and, oh, yeah. you know, tried to do it my own way and everything else. And, you know, at times, you know, it's, it's living up to the expectations yes. of your parents. It's, can I really live up to my dad? You know, I know your kids have the same thing. My dad's a great dad. He's, He's, he prays, he loves God, he loves people, he does it right. I mean, they don't see the flaws and we all know, we all have flaws. We've all sinned and fallen short, the Bible says, but they look at us as like heroes. And can I really do that? Lots of pressure and I had that pressure. I know your son had that pressure. And so just figuring it out with Jesus loving each one of us enough to figure it out on our own is so great. Now your son, he's, he's just, he's rooted, grounded, and doing his thing. You know, my kids, 
they, um, you know, we wish that we could just leave the inheritance of salvation to our kids, you know? Like it's just part, you're part of the Jordan family, you're saved, but it's not it how it works. It's not way. how it we works. We all have to say yes to Jesus. Your yeah. sweet mother, Willie, yeah. her words are ringing in my ear and I just remember her saying this over the years and she'd say, God doesn't have grandchildren, mm -hmm. you know? And how parents, we do sometimes have to just let them go and yeah. we wish that they would inherit our faith and belief yeah. and all of that, but it's true. It's like he doesn't have grandchildren. They're yeah. all his children yeah. and they all, he's got a plan and purpose for each one of their lives. And that's just such a beautiful story about your son. I have one a little similar with my son too, getting kicked out and all of that kind of thing and um, how it's come full circle now and he's serving the Lord. So it's like, praise the Lord, because it's so true. God's word does not return void and raise yes. the child up in the way he should go. And he, when he's old, he won't depart from it. And God's so faithful. He's so Isn't faithful. Isn't there something about that prodigal son? story yes, that just I think grabs we all us. Have it, huh? And 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 you know that the, the end of that story really grabs me is is the, the father lets us go. And, and sometimes that's the hardest thing for a parent to do is to yeah, let their child go. Absolutely. But when he returns home mm. and he had the speech in his mind and he was going to give a justification for everything, it didn't matter because the father ran to him mm -hmm. and grabbed mm -hmm. him and hugged yeah. him and brought him back into his household. Yeah. Um, I think sometimes uh, we just need to go through that moment of suffering, uh, of finding it myself, yeah. and seeing that Jesus never leaves us. In, in, never. in, in wherever we are, He's yeah. walking and journeying with us, waiting yeah. for us to come home. Yeah, yeah. with His yeah. arms wide open. And it's not He ever leaves us. We're the ones that leave yes. Him. And in our situations, even when we don't have that faith and we don't have that peace, we're like, God, where are you? It's like, no, He never left us for one minute. We wanted to take control of that situation, or we wanted Amen. to go out and spread our wings and you know and he's that that's what's so beautiful is he never leaves us or forsake us and and you know I think about back you know we're talking about our faith being so strong and it's like you know those first times in my life being a young believer and being hit with like you know some really scary situations um, not knowing what to do and, and then all of a sudden running to God's word and trying to get as much as I can and, and put my faith there and, and, and try to know it and, and, and try to, you know, receive all I could and how God brought me through and how he was there and how he turned this, you know, how he can, he, God is the only one that can take an impossible situation and make it possible Amen. or take a situation that years can go by and then later you turn around and go, oh, thank you, Lord, for allowing me to go through that. But what that taught me over the years was how I, you know, don't wait for that trial, that trouble, that situation to come and then reach out for God's word or then reach out to pray or then reach out to have a relationship with them. It's taught me definitely day in and day out to be full of his word, be full of um, my, you know, communication with him, prayer, faith, and his word to right. sound strong. So when, what's the scripture saying, don't be tossed back and forth, yeah. like, uh, you know, to and fro, like with the waves coming and mm -hmm. just letting it just take knock life. You yeah, knock yeah. you down. It's like, so, yeah. It's so important. Knowing and that's God's why word. The, the whole thing Standing of being firm. ready, kind of in and out of season, always being ready, always being connected, you know, with the Lord and just some thoughts, you know, I wanted to, to share with you and, and you, the viewers, um, God, you know, God knows everything we go through. He knows from the very moment the day starts, what's already going to happen in our lives. And he knows what's best. He, he wants the situations in our life as bad as they may be. He, he wants to make those the best for us. And, Amen. and it comes with us trusting him in the outcome though and that we need to trust him through that, whether it's sickness or illness, you know, whether it's our, our children being wayward. I was really wayward. And I just remember my dad saying, you know, to my mom, just keep praying for him, honey, keep praying for him. We just have to let go and let, let God, you know, take care of him and protect him. And she's like, yeah, honey, it's easier for you than me. But, you know, they just prayed for us as we pray for our kids and, and it, if we just know that God is in control and we trust him, then we'll always, always just know that we know that we know that Jesus is faithful and no matter what comes our way, he will take care of us. And just one of the things I wanted to share is that consistency, 
being consistent in our relationship with Jesus is what makes us close to Jesus. And in our time spent with God in his word and in prayer, and consistency brings us closer. And, and this is what Jesus said. He said, abide in me and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit itself unless it abides with the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me, from John 15, four. To abide, to endure, to just go for it and immerse yourself in Jesus 24 seven. And not that we have to be in our prayer closet or on our knees or just, you know, praying until we're babbling, but just constantly be engaged with Jesus. Be patient, trust God, and just put all your efforts into him. And you know what? Life isn't always going to be the same. It's going to have its mountains, its hills, its valleys. But if we will just trust in the unchanging power and might of God, Amen. and we will trust that Jesus has our best, no matter what we go through in the uncertain times, and we won't always look at the uncertainty and the fear and the worry and the doubt as I've told you viewers before, and look to Jesus and his power and who he is and who we are in him. We'll make it through it all. Amen. Amen. We'll make it through it all. That's so good. That's you just so have good. to trust him, right, Pastor? That's right. It is. There's, there's a rhythm in what you say because uh, we go through life, we think we're living it on our own, but what we find is, is uh, that, that Jesus never leaves us in, in life. Um, if, if I can find a rhythm of life that, that it, it, one, one gentleman in my life, a godly mentor, he told me, he says, how is it between you and the Lord today? And if I just ask myself that question every single day when I wake up, when I get out of my bed, mm -hmm. before my feet hit the ground, how is it between man? And I, and I just pray, Lord, today, will your Holy Spirit give me a divine interruption? Help me to see you mm -hmm. in my days. Because the rhythm of life takes me away from that, that walk with Jesus. That's right. And so I need mm. to put, I, I need to be um, specific about putting daily devotions in my life, that I'm in a, a prayer closet with, uh, that I'm, I'm bringing these things to the Lord. When, when my son went through the difficulties of his life, um, his mom prayed this prayer every single day. She said, if, help my son get in trouble if he makes any bad decisions. <laughs> and, yeah. and every time he made a bad decision, something would come up. And I really believe the prayer of a mother mm -hmm. makes an impact in their kid's life. So just that idea, you know, That's this so daily good. walk with the yeah. Lord. Yeah. And then so. stop and ask yourself, what is making me inconsistent? Because yes. we're talking about the consistency, consistency, which is so important. And by the way, if you don't mind me saying, Every day I'm receiving text from you, and we're gonna talk a minute how you can get involved with us on social media. And your texts that you have going out right now are so wonderful, I want all of you to get on it. But that's another way yes. to be consistent, is get a scripture from Joe every day on your phone, and there it is, building you up in the faith. But back to being inconsistent, like I had to stop and go, okay, now what are some things that are, I'm being, you know, being too busy, being focused on the wrong yes. thing. So sometimes if we really acknowledge what's making us inconsistent, we can make those changes. Yeah, we have a choice. Be consistent. intentional. Yeah, yes. there you, you know go. what? Yeah. Not perfect. None of us are. And look, I, I'm not saying you can be either. We're not perfect, but Jesus is. And if we're intentional about our love, our faith, and, and just wanting our, our trust to be totally in His hands, He'll be faithful. He will, and He'll make us more like Jesus, and He'll guide us, and He'll take us, not just by the hand, but He'll, he'll drag us and carry us through anything this life throws at us, but we have to be intentional. That's right. Well, we're gonna be right back talking more how to build our faith up. Here at Fred Jordan Missions every day, we see all, all types of people. I remember as a kid, my father Fred and my mom Willie teaching me a song about Jesus loves the little children of the world. Red and yellow, black and white, we are all precious in God's sight. I still know that song, I taught it to my children, and that's exactly what we see here at Fred Jordan Mission every day. Red and yellow, black and white. Every single person that you could think of from children all the way to seniors are here on the streets living in LA. And they come to our doors to be loved on, to be shared with that Jesus loves you and Jesus saves. 
You know, we hand out water, we hand out drinks, we hand out snacks, we preach the gospel, we have hot meals, we do special events. But if you want to know who comes through our doors, it's all of us. There's no certain person, there's no certain look. But like I said in that song, red and yellow, black and white, we're all precious in God's sight. That's who we see here every day at Fred Jordan Mission. People from all around this country that end up on these streets can come through our door and we will serve them as we declare and demonstrate the love of Jesus to those in need. Well, welcome back and we were talking about having strong faith that no matter what life throws our way, we're going to stand strong and consistent in our walk with the Lord. And I was talking earlier about how I'm just loving getting um, the text from Joe and I want all of you to, first of all, come and find us on social media on Facebook, Instagram, go to your browser, look up FJM and you'll see everything that's going on with FJM. But come on over to Facebook and Insta and join the family. We've got a great community, people over there of like minds and we just love to kind of share with one another and always, always are encouraged. But um, how you can receive a daily word um, of encouragement from Joe, a scripture. And what I love about it, it just comes up on my text and I don't, it takes out all the footwork and all the extra work that I need to do. And um, I just love it. And, and I'm very encouraged. And so it's one way to keep your faith strong. So text B-I-B-L-E to the number 626-314-7703 and get signed up and get your daily word of encouragement and Bible scripture from Joe. Yeah, Yeah, awesome. it's been wonderful. I've loved yeah, it. That's awesome. And you know what? Today, if you don't know Jesus, I just want you to know there's a God in heaven that loves you. He loves us. He died on the cross for you. God loved us so much. John 3, 16 says that he sent his one and only son. If you would believe in him, you can receive forgiveness, cleansing of all your sins, and you can have that right relationship with God because of that sacrifice of love Jesus gave on the cross. All you have to say is, Jesus, I'm a sinner. Come into my heart, forgive me of my sins, and be my Lord and Savior and you can know Jesus. If you already know him, but maybe you're in a bad place or maybe something's discouraged you, just remember today, tomorrow's a new day, every day's a new day to follow Jesus. Just say, Lord, I, I'm sorry, I'm, help me get back on track and he will. And you know what, if you want faith 24 seven, start today by just taking one scripture and saying, God, teach me your word, show me your ways and help me to be more like Jesus. Join us in feeding hungry children and their families by phoning today, 844-FJM-FOOD or donating online, fjm.org. That's fjm.org. Or mail your check to Fred Jordan Mission, P.O. Box 12345, Covina, California, 91722. Please, will you help? The preceding program was sponsored by Generous Friends and Partners of Fred Jordan Missions.